Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode. Today we're going to automate an attack that allowed us to enumerate the internal information in the server in a totally blind way. So let's get started. The previous episodes are available in the playlist Penetration Testing. Make sure to check them out. I'll post the exact links to the different episodes by the end of the challenge. Those who haven't seen the previous episodes are encouraged to do so before continuing with this video because we're going to build upon them. So this is how the script looks like. It's a Python script. We start by defining the URL to our vulnerable uh, CMD service. And then I define a function run that accepts a needle. This is the information that we want to look for in the server. So I'm iterating through lowercase characters, uppercase characters, digits, and then some special characters like underscore and dash, things that could construct a name. And so I define a CMD inside that for loop that is going to get injected into my placeholder right here. If you remember, this is exactly our payload that we are being, we've been playing with in the previous episodes. So this is exactly that payload. Our commands get injected right here. And so this command is nothing but my needle plus the character that I'm trying to figure out. Now, the command here would be, in this case, ls slash home slash percent star, right? As simple as that. Now, maybe I just need to insert double quotes to take into consideration spaces. Okay, and then I construct my arg post data, which I'm using inside my post request. And I'm using the module requests. It's a famous module in Python. And I'm just defining a proxy here to see the requests as they go through the proxy. And my proxy is running on localhost. This is nothing but my burp suit proxy. And I'm measuring the time before and after running the request. And I store that value in delta. And if delta bigger than three seconds, then I know for a fact that the character is valid. And so I add it to the needle. I print a message and then I run the same commands, the same function. This is a recursive function with the new needle. And I break and return if nothing found. And finally, I just run this function. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, found D, found A. Now we can see that there are some requests in the proxy. So these are all the requests that are getting sent. And as you can see, each time we are iterating through the characters right here. Okay, so it seems that the user first user is called DAS. The machine is called DASBox, so the author is DAS. No surprises here. What about the second user? So I can escape that character. So I'm going to test if the character is uh, not in the list of characters, and in this case, D, because I don't want to find the same user again. Okay, run it once more. We have a bunch of requests that are sent here and we have one, another user starts with W. So what I can do here is now remove that line. I don't need it anymore. And um, I want to start with W from here. This is uh, just a hacky way to, you know, try to enumerate the user, but I'm sure you can find a more elegant approach to uh, achieve that without having to exclude some characters. Let me know in the comments what uh, are your approaches here. And maybe some snippets of code would be welcome as well. So once more, let's run it. And now we are going to wait eagerly for the name of the remaining user. Okay, so we have three. You. Hmm. Interesting. W3 use, I guess, user. 
Yes, okay. Let's guess the next one. User, maybe that's the only one. The last letter. Oh, no, four, okay. Four H, okay. W3 user for HT, HTTP. Oh, okay, HTTP, I hope so. Yes. Um, is there anything else? Maybe HTTPO, okay. HTTP, oh, for HTTP only, okay. Yes, L, Y, 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 please, please. Oh, perfect. What else do we have? W3 user for HTTP only. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is the name of the second user. Um, it's really fun when you write some code to automate a tedious task. Now, imagine that you have to do all that by hand. That could be really bad. Okay, um, so we have the name of the users. What about the permissions that we have on those users? We are WWL data, as we've seen in the previous episode. So can we like enumerate that? You should now have an idea of how to achieve that. So pause the video and uh, think about it. Okay, so we want to see if we can list something in a directory inside the user. So ls home. Uh, das, and I'm interested in learning if there is a .ssh. I love this folder. If you've seen my previous videos, this is my go-to uh, technique when I want to persist my access using SSH. So uh, let's see if we get any results. And yeah, bummer. We don't have a .ssh. However, can we create it? So instead of ls, I'm going to type mkdir to make that directory and nope we don't have maybe the rights because we have an instant response well what about the second user this one right here okay let's copy it and paste it here first of all I just want to see if there is already a folder named .ssh Nope, there is no folder. Okay, mkdir, and now send that request. Oh my god, it worked! The folder got created. So this means that WW data has access to that user. So this essentially means that we could write our public key in the authorized keys file and potentially get access using SSH and we will have a comfortable, very comfortable shell compared to this crap that we have here. So stay tuned as we explore this in the next episode. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.